giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. The Elite Division honestly did not um, get to watch a whole bunch of matches. Um, there are very many at all in daily. Um, Alliance won Big Red Bob. We would pick up the, the flying toasters there. Uh, Alliance number two, Aces High would pick up mm, Rambotics, <laughs> which apparently is a thing from region recap. Um, and then uh, the <clears throat> Trisonics 4003 would pick up Burt um, and some others as well. And uh, we would see uh, in the finals here, we would see one versus three. Um, and as we've already said, you know, th no number ones would make it. So uh, the Alliance three would take the win there in uh, three matches. And all of them were, it looks like all of them were within 10, 15 points or so. So just to kind of another epic battle that went down in daily. So um, I don't know if, guys, do you have any thoughts on any of these teams or any of these matches? Uh, I'll chime in a little bit. So uh, yeah. I, I think this, uh, when I saw Alliance three, I, I was pretty excited for it. Um, 4003 Trisonics is a team I don't think has kind of really talked a lot about, even though they had a, a pretty darn good year last year uh, as well, too. Uh, and uh, picking up 133 Bird, I think, is another team that falls in the same category where they're both, you know, that way. And if I remember correctly, Trisonics won their division Archimedes uh, and MSC, if I remember correctly, last year. And then they come out here with no blue banners until they get uh, to uh, Daily Division. And so it was really cool to see kind of these teams that, you know, were maybe a little under the radar pair up together in 862. You know, they won MSC this year, but as a third robot. Um, so they get picked up as well, too. And it was pretty cool to see just this kind of this ragtag uh, group come together to defeat, uh, you know, the 319 uh, alliance with the Flying Toasters as well, too. So, I mean, Big Bad Bot, I think it's a fantastic robot. I think they performed really well. Um, I just think it came down to the consistency of the number three alliance in the finals. It was cool to see, uh, like I said, just some teams that, you know, maybe don't come to the forefront of your mind unless you're from those local areas uh, take this division. Uh, I do think uh, that Daily was one of the weaker divisions uh, out there. Um, so when the alliances came in, and we'll talk about Einstein a little bit, uh, not too terrible to surprise me on that performance. But, you know, overall, uh, it was still... Uh, I watched some of the match videos afterwards because, like Mike, I wasn't on the field at the time, but it was uh, interesting to see nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Cool deal. All right. And then, Tyler, you're going to take Darwin? Yes, I am. Yeah, my transitions are slow right now. I don't know about you guys, but, like, you know, after, uh, especially Mike and I, after two weekends, uh, like, my, that's a bag my, mouth is just, that. my mouth is just dry right now. So oh, <laughs> sorry yeah, about that. Good. Yeah. Uh, so Darwin Division. Uh, Man, I'll tell you, uh, 1676 uh, Pascac Pioneers, who I usually confuse for Citrus Circuits, uh, <laughs> taking the number one uh, pick right there. I don't know if I saw that coming. I don't know if a lot of people saw that coming, but kudos to them uh, for doing so. Uh, following up in the rankings, uh, 3707 uh, Brian Tetno Dogs. I don't think much of a surprise uh, for that. Tech Fire, uh, 3542 Speed is a team I'm not familiar with, but from Michigan uh, as well, too. Uh, Midnight Adventures taking the, the fifth seed and. Uh, uh, I didn't really get to see them play too often, but I heard they were looking pretty sharp uh, as well. So pretty cool to see for that. Uh, and the interesting thing to me uh, was when we come to the finals is that I actually was looking uh, at the number four lines right away when you had uh, 3542 speed picking up uh, my favorite uh, performing team, I think, from Israel. Not necessarily my favorite team. I, I have a lot of favorites in Israel, but, man, 1690 just looked incredible. Uh, and then they pick up as their third row out, Engineers, and I'm just like, you know what? This is a well-composed alliance. I think this mm -hmm. is the one that's going to make it. However, on the other side of the bracket, number two alliance, uh, of course, Brian Tetno Dogs, along with Thunder Chickens. Thunder Chickens uh, just consistently improving uh, throughout the year, especially with their early exits uh, at the beginning of the year. And then they pick up the Rembrandts, uh, which... Uh, I love that team as well, too. And then 12-18 is their uh, fourth pick as well, facing off in the finals. Uh, to me, this ended up being – I did get a chance to watch some of this finals because it was right next to us. Uh, and this was a really cool, really close final. So it was really neat to see, uh, you know, the 1690, uh, 33, 35, 42 with two, three, seven alliance taking the first match. And then it just kind of bounced back and forth. And these matches, uh, I thought were quite close. I thought it could be anybody's game. And in the end, uh, of course, going down to be world champions, uh, fantastic by the uh, number two alliance, uh, in this division. Yeah, I just want to reiterate again what you said about 217. I mean, they were just struggling at uh, their first district event. They came to Finger Lakes and struggled, struggled there. So, you know, to see them, we just kind of 
heard things, you know, if, when alliance selections happen, I've kind of heard, oh, 217 is in the, you know, got picked here, and then all of a sudden they're in the, the playing in the round robin, and all of a sudden they're mm -hmm. winning the round robin, and all of a sudden they're on Ford Field, and all of a sudden they're world champs. It's just like, holy cow, how yeah. did that happen? That escalated just, quickly. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, but it was a heck of a trajectory, and great, you know, a great job by them. Yeah, I have to admit, I, I was expecting to see the number three versus number four alliance when I originally looked at uh, the standing. So number number four being with uh, 1690 uh, and 2337, 3542, and number three being uh, tech, uh, tech Fire and Neutrons uh, with uh, 503 Frog Force. Yeah, uh, with them as well. Uh, that's who I expected to be in the finals. Uh, but, you know, after watching 3707 uh, and their alliance, I don't think they were the quickest alliance out there, but I think they were a very consistent alliance. And I think that's what took it for them. Plus that double climb, well, Brian Techno Dogs was a little slow, uh, it ended up being consistent enough for them to, to get them onto Einstein. Cool deal. All right, uh, Justin, you got Tesla, I think? On Tesla. Tesla. Oh, I thought we were going to do the Toby team interview. I guess oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, that's that's my bad, actually. Um, no, so, okay. um, so I'll cue that oh, real quick. So um, we had... Uh, uh, as mentioned, uh, we got to catch up. Uh, Mike and I got to catch up on Ford Field with each of the uh, winning teams uh, from uh, the uh, Detroit Championships. And, you know, I really wanted to catch up with 1218, uh, the Vulcan Robotics and SCH Vulcan, something like that. Uh, because I think a lot of times, you know, people assume the fourth robot, they didn't play at all, that they don't really have a role to play in something like this. So I want you to take a look just to hear the interview. Uh, we have the drive coach on uh, from 1218 and then uh, their lead strategist as well, too. I'll uh, just hear about how they contributed to the Alliance and why them being on was so important. So let's take a look. Checking in with team number 1218, Vulcan Robotics, down here in the field of Detroit, world champions. I'm here with Dominique and Hadley, and I really want to talk to you guys because I think a lot of times that a fourth row on the alliance doesn't always get the recognition that they deserve for things, and you guys still had a huge impact to how that alliance works. So, Hadley, you're the drive coach, and I want to hear a little bit about, uh, as the fourth alliance robot drive coach, what did you do on the field? How did you make sure your alliance was successful? So on the field, I kept track of game pieces and where we could score. And I also coached our uh, alliance partner, 4481, on defense and made sure we weren't getting any penalties and could uh, block the other team from scoring so we could get ahead as much as we could. And Dominique here, you and I were talking earlier. First off, uh, you were a waitlist team that got in, which is absolutely incredible. So I want to hear a little bit about that when you heard that you're going to championships. Uh, and then I want to hear more about kind of the strategy and the scouting that went behind it, because I know you had a lot of impact for that as well. Yeah, so we were in the FMA district, which was just so deep, the field. And so we weren't even picked at our championship, but um, we got off waitlist. We were so excited. And in terms of strategy, I've just been watching matches all week weekends all the time and even watching our alliance partners and now we get to work with them and so watching each match looking at where are the opportunities on the field where are we losing points that we could get back easily where can we stop them from getting points stuff like that for each match in detail for every member of the alliance well 12 18 world champions here in detroit congratulations for an absolutely phenomenal season Thank you very much So congrats oh, yes. again. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say congrats again to 1218 yeah. uh, on, on contributing. Like I said, I think it's really cool to hear just kind of those those stories that you'd never be able to hear otherwise, right? I think a lot of people look at it on paper like, oh, they didn't play, which means they had nothing to do with the alliance, and I, hopefully they convinced you otherwise because uh, I think they they showed what an integral part they could be uh, or was to that alliance as well. So congratulations yeah. on 1218 uh, for being world champions. Yeah, for sure. And as Justin always reminds me, one of my favorite teams because they're from Philly and they use uh, – oh, he's dead. And, We're uh, back. <laughs> uh, they use hockey sticks on their robot uh, a lot. And I mentioned that to uh, Dominique. I can't remember the drive coach's name, but um, – uh, they said they were going to like put something on their on their driver station this year, uh, or at least hockey sticks from the flyer. So that was cool. Yeah, it was oh, just nice. like, it was really yeah, like just to echo you, Tyler. It was really great to hear. Um, just you know, a team that doesn't didn't didn't play at all, but still had a great impact and a great voice on the alliance. And it just sounds like that alliance was just really gelling. You know that they were really just a team and alliance together. So it was really cool to see. Yeah. So. Okay, so now it's time for Tesla, Justin. 
All right, so Tesla, um, not one of the strongest divisions um, when they first came out. I think their average OPR was among the lowest, but still had some teams that we've talked about a lot. Uh, Aluminum Falcons, Swart Dogs, Team Rush, uh, 1285, uh, The Big Bang, 610, Crescent. Um, so some some definitely some um, 548 throwable stacks. So some teams that we've talked about in the top 25 uh, for a while, but the team that ended up seeding number one was a team we haven't talked about a lot, which was Wavelength, 3572. No. Uh, out of, yeah, right, exactly. Out of Michigan, going an impressive 10 and 0 on a 3.5 RS. So it really um, wasn't even closer. Uh, uh, at the top there, they just absolutely dominated. They picked uh, 1262. Uh, I will say that they're the Stags. Another team I don't think we talked about no. um, a whole lot. But there were some also, uh, like I said, some some teams that we've talked about. 525, the Swart Dogs, Captain Number 3 Alliance. Team Rush ended up on the 5 Alliance. Uh, Robo Stangs ended up on the 6 Alliance. So there were some um, some good teams and some good, some good matches. But of uh, which is kind of been the theme throughout this, it was the number eight alliance of 610, 1577, 33, 24, and 43, 38. That would upset the number one alliance in their quarterfinals. Um, the five upset the four, the six upset the three, and the seven upset the two. So it was uh, quite a topsy turvy um, alliance um, or elimination playoff bracket. Mm -hmm. um, 610 advancing to the finals from the left side of the bracket, three, uh, 346, 548, 5401, and 25. 34 advancing from the right side of the bracket uh, with the number six alliance uh, ended up winning um, in the finals in two matches. So kind of a, just, a, you know, of a overall in a Detroit alliance or elimination tournament that had a lot of upsets and crazy play. Tesla kind of epitomized that um, with the, the play that we saw with all the top four alliances being upset in the quarterfinals. Something I want to uh, just add in on, on a couple things. Uh, uh, you know, looking in when I'm like at these alliances, yeah, definitely not what I would have expected, I guess, the way the division played out for something like that. Uh, I, I think, you know, you look you looked at alliance four and five, and I'm just like, man, this might be uh, some of the best teams out, out there might be on these alliances as well, too. But uh, I give some kudos to 346, a small uh, compact robot that got the climb consistently uh, over and over and able to uh, score uh, very consistently on level one. I thought really helped them and their alliance 548. Uh, looking really good, too, uh, for number six. Uh, their third pick I'm actually not too familiar with, which is Fighting Robotic Owls, but this team uh, won Mar uh, th this hmm. year. Um, so, in, or I'm sorry, uh, what's it called? First Minute FMA. Third. There FMA. we go. Yeah, FMA. Yeah. So I'm always confused because on, on TBA it says Mid-Atlantic District Championship, so I always think it's like Mar still. but uh, And they won a Happer a Horsham for that as well, too. So definitely a team that got my attention. Uh, yeah, a bit more, right? <laughs> uh, a bit more on that. So, uh, but 610 coming through and getting uh, a strong uh, team from Israel, Steampunk, uh, who has definitely, I think, turned many heads in Israel. Uh, I thought it was a fantastic selection by them. And then picking up the Metrobots, who I've heard of before. Uh, you know, after 8 beat 1, I thought they had a really good chance. And of course, they did go to the finals uh, as well, too. But uh, the uh, number six alliance uh, just kind of just kept going and just. Uh, looked really good. Didn't didn't play uh, three matches. Uh, well, they played three matches in the in the semis. Off the top of my head, yeah. Um, so, but regardless of it, I, you know, this is a division. Obviously, we didn't get to watch as much. Uh, I, we're not going to go into the details. You can read the thread on Chief Delphi uh, if you want to. But obviously, a little bit of controversy happening on Tesla uh, near the end. But you can you can go read about it, make your own interpretations on that. Uh, people apologize already, so um, I, just in case people ask about it and mention it on here, that's why we're not talking about it because it seems like the issue has been mostly resolved. I do hope that um, first though has some more better clarifications and quicker actions on things as well. Um, I know that um, it was handled on the field right away, but then this kind of boiled over. And I'd love to just see, um, and I know first is short staff and all that stuff, but it, I would love to see just like, hey, like we are we are taking this very seriously in the future and as this stuff pops up to address it right away. Uh, but so that was unfortunate. But on the other hand, uh, you know, moving on, congratulations to the number six alliance uh, for making a really strong showing. And I think surprising a lot of people, uh, including myself, uh, as they enter eliminations. So I don't really know the situation, what you're talking about, but I think maybe, I think it's important that first gets, gets it right. So I don't know if they were, yeah. 
I mean, it, it was handled. Uh, data in, information before they. Yeah, you know. and I'll give the real quick cliff notes. Uh, there was a team uh, in the finals that was holding up uh, signaling devices, essentially in the stands, which is legal the way they were doing it. Uh, Opposite Alliance took exception to that. Specifically, uh, one team did. Uh, and they uh, did some very uh, unfortunate acts based on my reading on what that person apologized for uh, to prevent that person to try to signal. And it was just a, a, a not a good situation for something like that. So, you know, it was addressed there. I, I know Frank Merritt was over on that field, so that's good. Um, just want to see clarifications and maybe kind of some like postmortems afterwards uh, from first uh, that, that kind of make the public aware that this stuff is not acceptable for things. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.